Okay, this is the way the finance combination finance committee and select board meeting. It is um, 6 p.m. And for tonight's meeting, we're expecting the Tritown Beach to come in at 615. Following Tritown Beach will be the South County Senior Center at 630. Following that will be the water department at 645. And then wrapping up with the recreation department at 715. So we'll be waiting um, till 615 to um, um, hear from the Tritown Beach. While we are waiting for the Tritown Beach, um, Jim, would you like to go over the comparative uh, between now and yeah. Tritown? Um, I'd like to start off by saying I'm not convinced that we need that the town needs another pickup truck. But if we decide that the town does need one, I wanted to do a comparative analysis of a gas versus electric pickup truck. And what sparked all this was I read in this morning's recorder that the town of Leighton is has approved purchasing a $2,200 charging station software maintenance agreement, five-year agreement, which I didn't even know. I hadn't even considered software maintenance agreement on charging station. And it got me thinking what other costs are associated with the EV. So I, I just put this together real quickly and I'd like to start at the top and, and slowly work down to you. Let me just get through it and then you can pick it apart and ask questions all you, you wish. First column is a gas vehicle. The second column is electric vehicle. Third column is a difference. The fourth column are notes with estimate, um, assumptions um, noted below. So the front end costs, along with electric vehicle, we need a, a charging station. I assumed we would need a dual charging station, a level two charging station, which charges twice as fast as the level one. And went on the internet and found one for $1,627. So I assume $1,600 and estimate $400 labor, $2,000 for the station. I used the Lighten uh, estimate of $2,200 for five-year software maintenance agreement. And then I used the requested $85,000 for the EV and I estimated $45,000 for a gas. So the upfront costs it would be 45,000 for gas, 81.7 for electric, a difference of 36.7. I didn't mention that I uh, subtracted $7,500 for uh, rebates. Rebates range from 1,500 to 7,500. You know, I can, yeah, I just have a comment on the cost. Uh, I know Keith, I think estimated the $85,000 cost. I happened to just pull up the Ford website for the prices on. F-150 electric, and they run from 39,974 to 90,874. Okay, you could let me just get through oh, this. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, before you got that, that yeah. So uh, based on the request of 85,000, um, I have that plugged in here for the electric costs, netted out the rebate of 7,500 to 81,700 versus 45,000 difference of 36, 1700 annual operating costs. I use the current US average of $3.45 a gallon for a, a gas. I used my last 12 months electric bill, averaging 24.6 cents per kilowatt hour, and that's the, an aggregated rate for electric. The Miles per gallon, I estimated $15 for gas. Miles per kilowatt hour, I pulled that off a Kelly Blue Book article this morning, three miles per kilowatt hour. So 23 cents a mile for a gas vehicle, eight cents a mile for an electric. If we assume 15,000 miles a year, again, it could be much higher. I'm just using 15,000. Gasoline costs would be $3,450 a year. Electric costs would be $1,230, a difference of $2,220. I assume 
annual maintenance cost for gas would be around a thousand a year. The total operating cost for gas would be forty-four fifty. For electric would be twelve thirty. A difference of thirty-two twenty. So if we use the upfront cost of uh, difference of thirty-six thousand seven hundred dollars difference between the gas and the electric, divide that by the savings for an electric vehicle of thirty-two twenty a year. That'd be eleven point four year break even. So, I, you know, based on what Fred's now said, that break even would be cut in less than a half. From well, I, I don't know. We'd have to come to keep about what was necessary. I can't assume that we would get the that was range. range. That was a range that you just. Yeah, that was a range. And the number <clears throat> Keith gave us was <clears throat> right near the top of that range. Well, what the request is eighty five thousand. Right, the request is eighty five thousand. So that's that's a number that we have to work with here. So I guess my point is, based on these numbers, these estimates, um, we'd be breaking even when we'd have to trade the vehicle in. It's, it's a 10-year-old vehicle now, um, probably 11-year-old vehicle by the time we found a replacement for it. So it'd be a break-even situation here based on this set of numbers. And again, I question the need for another vehicle at all. I, I'd like to see the log, the emergency call log for the fire department's new pickup truck, see what kind of usage we're looking at there. It's, I go by that truck several times daily and I never see it move. And I would suggest that we think about taking that fire department's vehicle and let the highway department uh, use it for their needs to replace the OE. So comments, questions, pick it apart. Um, Joyce commented that the cost he quoted includes the charging I'm sorry, couldn't hear you. The cost that he quoted already includes the charger. Okay. And the charging maintenance agreement? He didn't say that. She did not. She okay. It was was that a uh, was that a quick charger or was that a um, my nomenclature with the EV is a little bit a little bit behind the time <laughs> here, but uh, we, how quickly or how many charging units will will this require? Will this require a charging unit at uh, Keith's home <laughs> or just one at the at the DPW garage or? So those are also things that have to be um, have to be looked at as well. But to this point, um, Jim's analysis is uh, pretty 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 much the most complete I've seen to this point. Um, I think he did a great job on it. Um, so it's something that obviously the finance committee will take into consideration as we move forward. And we think about these um, costs. Any other questions for Jim or for this? Analysis? The only other comment I have is that the financial consideration isn't the only one of electric versus gas. No question. Um, I don't. I, I don't think anybody would um, argue that one. Um, you may want to spell that out. Environmental. Do we want to? Would we rather have an electric vehicle or? A gas vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's almost that's uh, you know that is a discussion that we can have downstream prior to making. I, I just want to get on the record that it, it's good to have the financial analysis. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. But that's not the only consideration yeah. in this potential purchase. Thank um, you, Fred. Paul. Yes. Um. Uh, Jim, thanks. That's really interesting. Um, I uh, I thought I remembered from a previous meeting that Brian said that our green community status has that, that there are some requirements about our vehicle <clears throat> purchases and right. some time schedule that go with it. Um, I, I don't know if anyone another <laughs> lots of people in the room. I don't know if anyone knows what those I, what I those recall that. Are. Sure, I recall that, and I think that was one of the stipulations why. 
we move forward with the EV versus going with the uh, what do they call it? The combo. It's coming. <coughs> it's coming hybrid, down the pipe right. as a as a right. mandate. Right. So there is that. There's certainly that question that remains out there. Uh, the other question is whether or not we have vehicles already purchased that can be reissued uh, from one department to another uh, to save those costs. So that's certainly something that um, that we will take into consideration. Sure that you're just kicking the can down the road. Well, you 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 might be because um, you you do need you do need that. Fire department needs that command truck. Okay. Is it is it is there such a thing as a hybrid pickup? No. Not at the moment. <clears throat> and SUV, yes. <clears throat> Police department is getting one. I can interject a little bit. Um, one of the things that I can update you is that electric is not a requirement. I thought originally it was, but Brian did his research. Really? It is not. Requirement is what he told me under the Green Communities Act. So we don't. That is why the gas is back in here as an option. Um, I've definitely and given Brian some information that I can perhaps share with Jim so you can maybe update your information and things such as presently taking the existing vehicle and doing the, the calculations on the amount of years, months that we've owned it. Averages 8,000 miles a year is what the mileage is on it. So that should be a pretty good number to, to work with going forward. Um, there are a few times where it leaves town, but other than that, the majority is in town. So um, the the 85,000 had, with, with trying to just use a, a ballpark number, General Motors brought um, the salesman has actually came and saw me recently and that is the that is the price of the gm yes you can buy a ford cheaper but when you take the ford and you take the um get a comparable battery to the gm they're both right in the same ballpark maybe the ford might come in and just a little bit under the chevrolet but it's going to be in that in that realm of that 80 to 85,000. Um, those are a few things that I can tell you. Um, well, you know, I, you know, so basically, you know, when you take the not the 8,000 miles per year, that's going to really reduce the um, change your calculations a little bit as far as you know annual annual cost. But um, I can certainly work with Brian so that he can work with the finance committee to, to really tighten this up and then by the next time a decision might be made about it. Yeah, sure. I mean, we won't, I don't think we'll be coming down to a final decision and until, um, you know, sometime next month, later on in the month. Um, and um, so we have time for sure. Um, as you can all see, we are missing an individual here this evening. Brian's home, not feeling feeling well. And um, normally, when we have these meetings and we show up and we have an itinerary and, and we have a uh, uh, visitor uh, log and we know exactly who's coming in and at what time. Um, tonight, <clears throat> I see that we have the water department here. I also see that we have the police department here. Um, and Keith, yes. you're here for? I was just going to be here to represent the personnel committee. And the personnel com committee is here. And Tritown is on Zoom. And Tritown is on Zoom. Okay. Okay. So let's bring um, Mr. Chair. Yes. Two more minutes. Please. Minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. That's an excellent. I make a motion we approve the minutes of the March 1st meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, is there anybody on Zoom from Tri Finance Committee? Sure. Really? No. Okay, but so on Zoom we have the um, Tri Town Beach. Okay. They are they're due to be on at 6 15, and let's bring them on. We end. Okay.
Ken? You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yep, you're in. You're okay. In. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, my name's Ken Cutterback. I'm a Deerfield uh, Commission member from Deerfield, obviously. And uh, you've been on, on board for about a year or year and a half, I guess. Um, and uh, I'm here to answer questions you may have. I don't know what you have, if anything, on the budget. So I guess yeah, let me let me just give you um let me just give you a, a uh, an overview of what we have we have an assessment overview where for the twenty four request the weightly share of that is fourteen three five seven um, you changed obviously it's kind of large just percentage wise yes at seventy six percent dollar wise is six thousand um, dollars. When I go to the following page, uh, detail sheet, it looks like you're requesting from all towns 41022. Does that sound right? Um, 41022 would be the Deerfield share of the total. Oh, okay. Uh, and um, what's that? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. So let me just give you a, a, a quick, Upshot: um, The total to total expenses projected for the budget for next year would be fifty-seven thousand two hundred and nineteen dollars. Um, we use revenues collected for gate receipts and other things to defray most of the general operating expenses over the course of the year, and um, there's a net of about. Um, little under two thousand dollars but uh that comes out uh essentially as a as a surplus so the net um expenses after accounting for revenues is fifty five thousand three hundred and seventy nine dollars <throat> waitley generally has a 23 percent share of the overall budget You still there? Yep, yep. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Um, and your your number of 14,357 is a little bit over 23%. Mm -hmm. um, the Waitley commissioners on the, on the Tritown Beach Commission had agreed there's a $6,000 charge that we're anticipating to complete a study of the vegetation in the um, the pond that we're trying to get a plan approved through um, the National Heritage and Fire, um, it, it it has to do with a protected um, species of plant called the dwarf bulrush that is a is uh, considered a uh, endangered species, and so we have been designated in the Tritown Beach Pond as a national heritage environmental protection site and everything we do there has to go through the state um, it has to be permitted and everything else we spent um, a significant amount of money last year to get a full study done and a preliminary plan put together and now we have to go through permitting and they're estimating the estimate we've received is about six thousand dollars it's a one-time expense for this year um, and uh, we're hoping to get get the work done yeah. so that we can begin treatment of the uh, vegetation in the pond. <clears throat> so uh, the the two commissioners you have from Waitley agreed that Waitley would be able should be able to split fifty percent of that six thousand dollar expense instead of just twenty three percent. So that's why your share would be a little bit more than 23% on the total. Exactly. Who, who said that? From Who was the Waitley? Who were the Waitley representatives that uh, uh, vol volunteered our? John, <laughs> John, <laughs> Jonathan and uh, oh. Mark Boos here. Okay. Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, do we have any, 
what are your expectations coming down the road for this facility? Because it's 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 waxed and waned. It, there have been, you know, obviously the last couple of years have not been the high point um, in in its history. Um, right. So so what what are the plans for it? Uh, um, the plans, ahead. okay. The plans moving forward are that we um, we were quite encouraged by the you know the uh, participation that we had last year. Now I've got to find those other my other notes so that I can give you an idea. Uh, we sold. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me find the notes here. Um, we sold about 120, 125 um, park passes last year. And I've got the breakdown here somewhere. I think I'd be more organized after doing this again last night, but I stupidly closed the folder up. My apologies. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Just a moment. Not having luck finding them. Well, um, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, but basically, what happened last year is we we spent um, the balance of the 2022. Um, budgets and uh, other uh, towards getting the place open back up. We had to do extensive electrical and plumbing work. We um, brought in landscaping uh, help to get things mowed and started back up. Um, and we had an all new commission, so we were all new to it. Uh, and we were able to open, we didn't have full staffing, but we were able to open uh, for eight hours a day throughout the, the season, weather permitting. Uh, there were hours where we had no lifeguards on duty and the beach was posted that way, uh, that people were swimming at their own risk. Um, and we, we were encouraged by the, um, the amount of people that we had that came, came on, came and bought passes and utilized the, the uh, beach. And our hope is that uh, this year with more publicity and getting the word out further, we will see an increase in traffic there. And um, we're offering, uh, we're trying to offer more, more things that people can do. We'll have paddle boards that people can rent. We'll, we will have kayaks that they can rent. Um, they were the kayaks were utilized last summer, and um, we're, you know, as I said, we're working on the vegetation uh, issues, and the hope is that we'll continue to grow participation at the beach. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's nice to hear that there is a planned future um, for the facility. Um, what are we charging at the gate? Um, yeah, my notes. Uh, I, off the top, just there we go. I think I've got it finally. Oh, I found some numbers. <clears throat> um, at the gates, we are charging uh, $50, I believe, for a season pass for a family. Last year, we had a senior rate of $25. Um, we had 115 total passes were sold, of which 60 were senior passes. Um, the the uh, general observation was that the senior passes seem to be used as family passes by families. So we are not offering a senior pass option in the coming year. Good move. <laughs> so as I said, we, we had um, 115 um, total passes that were sold up to residents. We had 35 people from outside the town purchase passes at $100 a piece. We had 20 day, uh, 
you know, approximately 20 day passes at $20 each. And um, we also uh, received revenue from the River Valley Day Camp for their use of the, uh, of the beach and uh, the supervision of our lifeguards, uh, which was $2,000. And then we are able to rent the South Field or the field south of the, the beach, which is part of the property. Um, and we get $1,050 from a local farmer for that parcel. So we had over $12,700 in revenue last year. Wonderful. That's terrific. And as um, I said, what that does is it, it tends to offset the general operating expenses. It does not do a heck of a lot for the salaries, but, but it does offset the uh, okay. most of the operating expenses. Good. Ken, hang on a second. Amy, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Amy Trader. I'm in town clerk from Waitley and also a resident. Um, I have two questions. Out of the numbers you just gave us, um, how many were the passes sold were Waitley residents? Do you know? Um, that was the, those were the notes I was scrambling trying to find. I believe forty three percent. Okay, and then uh, just wondering your outreach efforts. Um, I get called basically for everything in town, and do you guys have a flyer or anything that you can provide us with so we can inform the residents of paddle boards or events going on there? Right. Um, we we do the website. We have robocalls, so we can include that information basically everywhere on our Facebook page. Um, but I've seen very little to no communication between right. Tri-Town and the town, at least on, at the in the town clerk position. Correct. I, and I think you're absolutely right. I've had numerous people um, approach me uh, recently saying that, you know, there were people that didn't weren't even aware that the beach was reopened. So we did a very poor job. We we were scrambling to get things going last year because we had no no idea what was going on. So our logistics were concentrated on just getting the place open, and we didn't do a great job of um, advertising. But we hope to get the word out much better this year. And yes, we'll try and get you. Uh, materials as soon as we have them printed. Thank you. That would be great. Yes. Do we have any other questions of Ken? Yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Could you identify yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Julie Wagoner, Select Board in Waitley. Okay. Um, uh, can you clarify a little bit about the vegetation? I I understand, and I'm not sure if I'm correct about it, that there's an invasive that you're trying to get rid of, but then there's also the or full rush, which is endangered, and you're trying to preserve that. Is that so? Well, somebody's trying to preserve it. Um, yes, okay. uh, there is a, a, I mean, there are a number of species that were identified in the study, um, but the, the primary is something called Elodia, which is a fairly common um, invasive species of uh, um, aquatic vegetation that. Uh, can take over a pond. Uh, I remember, you know, three or four years ago, back the last year before um, things shut down for between COVID and uh, the aftermath of the COVID uh, COVID situation. I can remember going to the beach uh, with my grandkids and watching lifeguards paddling by on their on their paddle boards with just mounds of vegetation that was floating into the swimming area and they were trying to keep it out and there were there was snow fence and other things but it's it's called elodia and it's okay. yeah e l o d e a i believe and um it's it's pretty it's pretty rampant in the pond the initial intent Sorry. what's that how does oh, that get removed the 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 removal would be a chemical treatment or an herbicidal treatment in the water, uh, targeted specifically only for the area around initially only for the area around the swimming area. So it's about a two and a half acre area. We're mm -hmm. also looking at the possibility of um, 
possibly being able to get something done with the Army Corps of Engineers, but we don't have anything official on that yet. We know that it's uh, and it's been done down in Northampton um, and, and was covered either by grants or by uh, the Army Corps, but we don't have specifics on that program yet. First thing we have to do is get a, an approved plan for management and and uh, clear designation of what we can and can't do about this uh, this uh, dwarf bulrush population that we have. <clears throat> so, thank you, thank you for clarifying. Sure. Thanks, Ken. Um, any further questions for Ken regarding the uh, Tri Town Beach uh, situation? Ken, I'm glad to see that you're representing Deerfield on there. Ken comes comes with a long uh, pedigree uh, in in regards to uh, what he's done in Deerfield between DES and uh, Frontier Regional High and ski coach and ski team and all of that. So uh, we look forward to some good things from you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, thanks and have a great okay. evening. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And you if you need any more information, you may certainly, Amy can, Amy has my email and I can be contacted through that. So. And, and just as a final note, um, how we approach the budget here in Waitley is that we listen to all, all of the departments and all of the requests. And then as we head, as we get towards later on in the year, as we get towards the annual town meeting, uh, we make a decision based on what the revenue looks like and what we can afford. Sure. And then we vote in that light. So, okay. okay. Right. And if I, if I may just add one thing, um, sure. a significant or most of the increase that you're seeing uh, in addition to the $3,000 for the um, vegetation study or the uh, permitting is it's, it's almost all salaries when we mm -hmm. went to to uh reboot last year our intent was to pay about 17 dollars for lifeguards and we couldn't hire anyone for less than 20. <laughs> mm -hmm. so these yeah. the salaries this year reflect that uh sure. uh that change so just just I'm so sure. you understand okay okay thank you thank you all for your time Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. All right. Bye now. Okay. We will move forth in the agenda. Um, Amy? Um, Senior Center. Senior Center was on at 6 30. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Please have a seat. Um, um, before we get started, I just want to make sure that you have the correct budget. Uh, we made it was made by the uh, town of Deerfield accountant and it reduced it slightly. Um, so the total correct amount um, that should be reflective for the entire budget is 151646 So this was done at the beginning of March, and I just found out last night at the uh, Deerfield meeting that I have the wrong one. So I want to make sure that you have the correct one. Okay. Let's make sure we have the correct That's one. That's what you have? Okay, I did send that out. I just wanted to make sure. Um, the reductions were in the admin cost or increase in the admin cost, but a reduction in the retirement amount was spent over. So um, that was the change. I just wanted to make sure that everyone had that. Um, for everybody, um, obviously, this tonight this meeting is live. And uh, could you identify yourself? Sure. My, name is, my name is Jennifer Brummelard. I'm the director of the South County Senior Center. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Ben. You're welcome. Um, okay, let's um, one of you guide us through sure. where you see the height, the, the increases, and why they're there um, before the town of Wayland. Um, most both of the increases that are listed here this year at uh, Deerfield is the uh, fiduciary and we are the staff is employed by Deerfield and they the personnel vote for voted for a five or five and a half percent cola and step increase this year so my salary um, is going up 
So that increased that um, dollar amount there. Uh, last fiscal year, I initially requested an increase in the outreach coordinator's um, salary paid through the operations account. Um, we ended up receiving the service incentive grant through the EOEA, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Um, so we did not have to utilize that money. So we moved that funding to uh, cover administrative office space as well as program space that's uh, located in the center. Excuse me, could you repeat what the COLA was again? <clears throat> Five or five and a half percent. I think it's five and a half percent. It was a step increase, and then um, so your two and a half percent step increase, and then I think three percent increase with COLA. Okay, so total five. five total of five and a half percent. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we also were able. Uh, you'll see in the previous fiscal year for twenty three, the formula grant increased. Uh, through the utilization of federal census data being utilized by the EOEA. So we are facing the formula grant, formula fund grant, which provides $12 per senior, which is considered any individual age 60 and over um, in the three towns uh, to the census data from 2020 versus um, the past 10 years, you know, or the last one, which was done in 2010. So that increased the uh, budget by about 12,500, uh, $12,504. So we were able to utilize the monies um, from the formula fund in order to pay for the average per year. During the last few months, um, through the approval of the Board of Oversight, as well as the select board in Deerfield, we increased the outreach coordinator's hours from the initial 15 hours to 19 and a half during the fiscal year, and now we're up to 35 full-time um, because we have increased membership over the last year by approximately 93 people through the end of the calendar year of 22, and then in January 16, and then uh, six members between February and March. If we were to break the total membership down, how many are from Waitley? Um, so active members, we currently have 28 members who reside in Waitley. Out of the 319 at the end of the calendar year uh, to January 25, 2023. Okay. And who was on the Board of Oversight from Waitley, representing Waitley? Too? Joyce Palmer Fortune. Joyce is? Yes. Okay. Hi. Joyce is being very engaged. Very good. Um, okay. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so with the increase of attendance, we've gone up as well from approximately, sorry, I just want to give you the exact figure. Um, the amount of individuals coming to center on a regular basis went from averaging around 30, uh, 31 individuals per program day. Now, mind you, program is open typically Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, from 9 a.m. to around 1 p.m. And we are now averaging 70 to 78 people per program day, uh, depending on the month. Um, that is a drastic increase. We've gone up about 90. 7% um, in participation, which has been phenomenal. Uh -huh. So with that being said, we needed additional staff support. Um, so that is why uh, the outreach coordinator for fiscal 24, um, $22,238 has been asked for in this uh, budget request versus I believe last fiscal year, we were around $15,000 requested, but we were able to transfer those funds to the administrative office space um, in Sunderland, which we moved in there in September, but didn't start paying rent until October. We had a two week grace period to move in without having to run funds. So you'll notice further down the uh, budget increase from $16,200 for fiscal 23 for the admin space, it moved up to $22,140 because that's a full 12 months 
where the other one reflects we moved in um, in October, so it wasn't a full year. We also um, had an increase in our program space, which is the Holy Family Parish in South Deerfield. Um, due to the increase in the utility cost, they requested that we increase our, our rent from $1,000 a month to $1,200 a month. And so that started in January. We also um, went back to paying um, landscaping costs, uh, which is something we did not do for the last two years because Deerfield DPW was able to do that space, um, but we're in a private space, so we are responsible for that. Staff, including myself, shovels the back ramp as well as the front stairs to also save some funds for that. Okay. Um, the other is, let's see, let's see what We are also, as long as our um, water and sewer usage stays at a minimal amount and it doesn't increase drastically, the uh, the landlord has indicated we don't have to pay an additional fee. It's included in what we're paying for rent right now um, at the Sunderland space. So that's been beneficial. Um, you'll also notice um, towards the bottom of the Fiscal 24, there's a carry forward funds because we are a, um, sorry, I have the word and now I've lost it, period. special revenue fund. Uh, the funds that we have left over at the remainder of the calendar year stay in the South County Senior Center budget. Um, and at this point, we're able to carry over $20,591 into the next fiscal year budget. It's probably leftover funds because of COVID factors, not having to spend as much money during that period of time, and also being without a director previous fiscal year for like six to seven months. Okay. We've also some things to note. Um, I don't know if included in your packet is our formula fund grant, which goes back to the $12 per senior that I have mentioned before. Yes. Um, okay, great. I'm glad you have that. So we're able to fund the remainder of the outreach coordinator with the um, funds from here. The service incentive grant, which um, we weren't sure if we would get last fiscal year or this fiscal year for 23, um, we did end up receiving but we were told is specifically going out to uh, be a competitive grant in 24, um, and it's going to be open up to all 350 uh, one towns to the communities to apply for for um, for the next year. We will apply for it, but that does not mean we will receive it. Um, but we were able to receive and reduce uh, the payments from the operations budget by $13,135.05. Um, with that grant coming in. Um, in addition, this formula fund grant also pays the entire salary of our program coordinator and that individual's uh, Medicare payments and longevity pay, which is a benefit um, that Deerfield gives their employees over 10 years, I believe. Um, you'll also notice an increased cost for printing our newsletter. Since we have increased our membership, there has been a high demand for our newsletter. Given our demographic, not everyone is able to access it on the computer. Um, so we still print off copies and you, you know mail them in the mail so people have access to them. But we recently um, recently started to mail out a bi-monthly edition. So we are sending it out this for March, we did a March and April edition. So we will actually be saving around $1,000 a year because of postage. Um, we still may have to print off additional copies if people want to get it in person. Um, ironically, I received a phone call yesterday from someone we hadn't seen since 2017, although sporadically receives meals from our grab and go distribution. I um, was curious why she no longer receives the newsletter in the mail. I said, well, you know, we hadn't seen you in a while, but we'll start sending it out 
in case there's something that they're interested in seeing. Um, okay. So that's an expense. But we also had additional carry forward funds available from the formula fund. So we will be um, spending the remainder of the $7,208 uh, left over uh, because we are utilizing about $1,458 for this fiscal year. With the increase um, for the $12,504, you'll see um, we did add some expenses in this category, mostly the um, outreach coordinator monies here, so we didn't have to dip into operations or any other funds. Very good. Um, I don't know if you reviewed the memo that I also attached because it was pretty lengthy. I think it's six pages. I'm looking, yeah. I think we've all had a chance to go through it, and I've, I've obviously glanced through it. Um, and what I have to say is uh, belief, um, and it outlines, certainly outlines the program, and it gives us a very nice overview of what you provide and what you're doing. From a grant perspective, um, as we can see right now, our um, what's being asked in Waitley is about a five thousand dollar increase. Um, I believe so. I believe we were at an increase of sixteen per, or actually sixteen point six six percent. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The sixteen percent. So we're going from thirty two four to through thirty seven nine. Yeah. So we're somewhere around five thousand. Yeah. Four fifteen. Yeah, with 28 members, nearly 30 members coming from Waitley um, for $5,000 increase. Um, I don't think you're going to get a lot of pushback here. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, but one thing I would um, I would encourage, especially the Board of Oversight, and I did they use this exact same sheet when you have a discussion about budget with them? We did not use this, this same exact sheet. The last meeting that we had was in January and this edition a revision came out mm -hmm. um, beginning of March, mid-March. So we're actually meeting on the 29th. The agenda is going up tomorrow and this is gonna be something that um, we talk about, but it's actually a little less than what we initially thought. Um, it was about, the initial one we had discussed in December, January timeframe was around $3,000 more on um, the original version I had, but then we have the reduction in the admin or the increase in admin, but reduction in retirement yeah. fees. So it's around okay. like 14 something, $1,400 difference. Um, my own suggestion is that um, your next line item budget that you include percentage increases with every line uh, nearly every department in this town submits a request in that form so we can see exactly in a given line item what the increase was from one year to the to the next in many cases going back five years yep. so um and i'm kind of surprised the board of oversight um you want a percentage because in this one here we don't need it now but what i'm saying is moving forward mm -hmm. i would change this sheet so that percentages are in here and easily seen. And I'm sure the other towns would appreciate that as well. So thank you very much. Are there any questions regarding the South County Senior Center? Uh, she's done a fantastic job. Yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on. We got oh, Brenda. Okay, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm looking at Jen and going like, did you just work for a long time? Yes. I, I said that to you last time. I'm 15 years ago. Okay, anyway, good all job. Right. Thanks, and nice to see you after all this time. You know, it's a small world. It is. Isn't it? Um, Amy, you had a question? Yes. Sorry. Hi, Amy Schrader, counselor. Um, is there any way we can get copies of your newsletter? Um, real estate taxes will be due May 1st. I would love to have them out. We will not have your foot traffic. We can pass them out to residents who come in or who it's appropriate to give to. Um, and then also, like, for programs, is that all listed in the newsletter? Because we can do as much out outreach in the office as possible. Our Facebook page, any anywhere where we can get it to, and also with Joyce, I'm not sure if she mentioned to you the way we scoop about putting an article in there. Yeah, we're gonna have one for the May edition. Okay, thank you. We didn't have one in time for the uh, December edition. Or the, we have a uh, question from Fred, so that board member. Is the 
funding distribution between among the three towns set by the charter of the yes through the IMA okay. agreement, the okay. municipal agreement that they have. Um, and I believe that was done in 2012 or 2010. Um, so that's okay. on record with each town. Has Conway ever approached? Um, no, but we have actually discussed that during the Board of uh, Oversight meetings because we do have members from Conway who do attend um, Senior Center. Um, you know, to get them involved. I'm sorry? It would be nice to get them involved to uh, yeah. share the load, so to speak. Um, you know, one of the things I do want to impress upon, I hope all of you do read um, the grant section of the memo because we, um, I, I applied for and received $11,720 um, through Life Path as well as um, $4,600 for this fiscal year from the Fred G. Wells Trust. And I just applied for another Fred G. Wells Trust uh, grant for fiscal 24 for exercise classes as well. Well, if you ever decide that you'd like to move to a municipality to do that yeah, same kind of work, right, right, right. we know we'll hire you. <laughs> you don't have to look too far. Um, that may be available. It may be available. Um, <laughs> just shooting that out there. Any other any other thoughts, comments, questions? Uh, thank you very much. Because uh, well, we remember the days when it wasn't like this. You know? Yes, last year I was very happy to be able to use statistical data. We're working to make sure that all of that information is accurately reflected um, on a monthly basis. Very good. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. I'm following you. I got Okay. Who lost control? Lost control. Lost control. Lost control. The meeting. Okay. All right. Break out the balloons. Um, all right. Who's next? Water department is next. Okay. Well, I see. Mr. Koski, George, you again. Everybody here is the backup. Wait a minute, we're gonna get the page. Yeah. Don't rush. Is there anybody on the page? Section 10. Section 10. Section 10. There it is. Okay, so this is the uh Waverly Water Department, and the Water Department for 2024 will be requesting $141,011, Wayne. Is that that's do I have the right sheet? No. Or no, you will be. Oh, 277.5. Is that the right sheet? 257.6.11. 257, 611. The one we got today. Okay. Here. Yeah, I think right. I sent it to everybody. And... Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Well, I'm sure you did. Straight one. Okay. Keep going. Right, this one? That's that second. I see a request. Increase 257, 257, 611. There you go. That's the one. More. I do have it. Amy, great job. Um, <laughs> one, one. Okay. Keith, tell us. That's Wayne. That's Wayne. But in case Wayne falls, Keith, could you just jump in for, <laughs> for him? Uh, we'll find Wayne, it. sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead, Wayne. You see, I might bounce around a lot because it might get confusing. So if I go step by step, the dues meeting, not slides, advertising, like <clears throat> advertising are all the same. Electricity, now that the center station has been running for a while, I have a better idea of what that costs in electricity. So that's up by $2,000. But we did get receive get whatever you want to call it a grant to put solar panels on the pump house I did which I still not a hundred percent on how everything works with that but it sounds like in the end it's an eighty thousand dollar system that I think is gonna cost us like seven grand in the end somehow well wow. and they estimate a yearly savings. It's not going to cover the whole electric bill, but it'll be like five grand, six grand. Mm -hmm. Phone and the cable stayed the same. Testing and chemicals, I use a lot less now. So that dropped. 
maintenance stayed the same. Parts went way down because we put a lot of new stuff into the system in the last four or five years. Truck maintenance went up a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Percentage wise? Yeah, percentage wise, it went up huge. <laughs> Truck's getting older. Yeah. Now, here's where it might get, yeah. start getting confusing. So, the engineering jumped a lot. We had our sanitary survey done this spring. And there's a bunch of things on the sanitary survey that the DB, DEP is requiring us to get done. One of them we have done was we hired an engineer and been dealing with an engineer to develop a capital improvement plan for the next, I can't remember, it's either 30 20 years, 20 years. So now that that's done, the next one, um, the next step in that is to do the other part. I guess I got to go back and do that. We're required now to apply for a withdrawal permit with the state because we now any we now average over a hundred thousand gallons a day over a three month period. So now we get this permit. In the end, the permit's going to cost just in the engineering and all that stuff about 50 grand. Oh. And we've done half of it. The, the, the extra, that's why the engineering on this budget went up so much is to get the <laughs> other half of it done, which, I mean, it includes that they kind of got to do everything hydrology studies, pump tests. There's a lot involved. The next one rose a lot because now that the center building's done, which we anticipated when it started, the loan, the rest of the loan is due this October. And that increase is what the department will cover to cover the loan that the hookups didn't. And then the asset management software that's pretty so when much you say when you say the part of the loan <clears throat> that the hookup did not I don't know if you remember up. way back if we go back to all those probably not but, <laughs> you know run it by me when we were doing the the merger committee there we we're yeah. going through all this stuff I remember that I remember that yeah okay you know I mean, the town's part, they were going to get the thing done. The town's part they were going to kick in was the in-kind services Ethan his crew. The departments was going to throw in whatever the hookup fees didn't cover. And then the rest was going to be covered by the hookup fee. Okay. So I explain it better? Well, you guys want to cover whatever was not covered by the hookup fees. Right. And then... What was it covered by the local trees was going to be covered by? No, us. no, no. Okay, water department. By the water department. Okay, all right. So the because it's not done yet, it's that generator and column. Yeah. But rep is so we got two two hundred thousand dollars from the hookup fees, and then the town's portion was keep and is in time the. In kind services, I guess you yeah, know. Right, right. Yeah. And then you're still short about 20 because we had to reborrow. Okay. From because it was originally due last October. And then we paid whatever we got for hookups, we put towards it. And then Lynn reborrowed the rest. So that added a little bit more to it. So originally it was going to cost the department like 18000 Now it's 20, 27, something, something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, what else is really big? The Mill River that's from last year was nothing. This year that'll be this is the last year that they will be coming down to make sure the monkey flower and the zebra so, mussel, the mussel, the mussels are taken care of. Yeah, that's what and, I and Everybody's yeah. doing well. Sure oh, and the box turf. There you go. Oh, okay. Well, 
the debt yeah. service for the manganese loan stayed the same. I mean, a lot of these, the tough thing is looking at the numbers. The budget went up a bunch this year because of the DEP stuff we got to do and then that loan being due. Yeah. The total numbers are tough. You know what I mean? If you're just looking at them to compare because of that whole $200,000 thing from borrowing to paying back. Sure. Other than that, that's about it. The watch one called the overhead. I don't, Brian does that. He does. Um, and unfortunately, he isn't here. And we have the, uh, we really don't have a request in here for that. Um, yeah, which I'm guessing, I mean, it usually goes up a little bit every year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, but the other thing is, I don't, I mean, I'll tell you now, I don't think this is the final budget. Because mm -hmm. now that we have that capital improvement plan, yeah, we're now going to sit down and do a rate structure to match it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think of the rates now? Now, on, on the rate too low. The what place still too low. low? Still too low. Okay. Um, and when do you project that they will rise? It'll be. It won't be for this. We haven't had to be an able to bill yet. There won't be this billing, it'll be next billing. So it should be October. Okay. Right. Well, you have a plan, that's for sure. But you can stay afloat between now and then. That is yeah, I believe yeah. so. I mean, the tough thing is is usually by now we've read in October, and then the second reading is usually March. So you have a good idea what it is. Yeah. But because of the software stuff and all that, we haven't read it all yet this fiscal year. Wow. Yeah. So like all the new hookup, nobody on the new hookups has had gotten a water bill. No, nobody on any. Nobody on any. Not for this fiscal year. Is that being resolved? Yeah, hopefully. Maybe, you know. Look at Amy. It is being resolved. However, the amount of time it takes is somewhat unacceptable for 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 them to be transferring data from one software system that we had to another. And it, it's unfortunate that it does. And hopefully, you know, I don't. Residents aren't going to be that happy in April. No, it's a pretty large bill, but I do feel a significant amount of them are aware of it. But it's unfortunate. Mm. Like, we like we switched billing software. Yeah, and and we have we have to had to get a new billing software that can coincide with our new billing with our new billing software, and for the water department. And it's it's unfortunate. It's just the way sometimes this works. I mean, it's not acceptable. I think. Oh, no. Um, but. I can't push these people to go any faster to bridge the data. Yep. I mean, and so, but they do promise that they'll have something in the next two weeks. So, and then they're going to do a training on it, which will be great. And yep. we'll get up and going, but, you know. Meanwhile, not, the water department isn't get, taking in any money. You're right. completely right. right. Yep. And uh, the next bill is going to be a whopper. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a full year's worth instead of a whopper. Yeah. 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 Has there been any public notification or a scoop or anything that get get ready? I don't know. Get ready, so. save your money. You're gonna you're gonna but if you're you're on the water system, you know you're not getting your water for free. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, you have to pay the bill a long time. Yeah. Most of them, I'm hoping, realize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because most bills are everybody's bills twice a year, pretty close to the same to itself. Yeah. So hopefully they just realized and just kind of stuck it to the side. Yeah. <laughs> you think so, huh? Before they had a good Christmas. Yeah. 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 Okay. All righty. Um, are you good? Yeah. Um, do we have any questions? I, 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 I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> You talked about the additional expenses that um, come from passing the hundred thousand gallon, whatever yeah. day or whatever. Yeah. yeah. 
When we voted um, the merger 2018-2019, did we did that extra requirement exist then? And did we not know about it or has it been imposed so, since the time we voted for the merger? No, how do I explain this? So this actually should have been done when we met the threshold 10, 12 years ago. So it's not the water district merger no. that has taken it over. We've just been given free pass by accident. Did they haven't caught it? Now they caught it. So <laughs> now they caught it. We got to pay. <laughs> now you have to do it. Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't the additional. Long use that the center uses. Well, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't <laughs> <filled> us. <laughs> right. I, you know, I mean, it is metered out of that building. So I kind of have an idea how much is used, but it's, it has nothing to do with that. It should have, they just didn't catch it. It should have been done a long time. We fell into it for that, met that qualification. I just wanted to make clear if anyone's watching on TV that the, Water department budget runs through the enterprise fund, not through the town general yeah. budget. Yeah. That the revenues aren't coming from the general tax levy; they're coming from rates. Yeah, water water yeah. I, I just want to make sure that everyone knew. <laughs> that's a good point. That, they're really right. That, that's the way. It is, and that's probably why I'm so interested about the rates and rate collection. So um, right, but it, it, it's not going to affect. The tax rate or anything else that money doesn't go through the general that's budget. That's true. Um, okay. Anyone else? Any votes? Wayne, thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Thank, thank, thank you for coming in to back clean up. Amy? So the rest of the time, I think we're going to be here until 7.15. Who was it? Okay. While we're while we're waiting for the rec department, I think we can move towards the uh, personnel. Yes. No. Yeah. Be good. They've been waiting. So let's. Uh, so it's Keith. Uh, you here? Alone? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm present. There's obviously maybe other people in the room. That have interest of in what's going on this evening, also. I'm just here as the chair of the personnel committee to, right. to sort of explain what happened at our personnel committee meeting. Obviously, the select board and the finance committee members are here as well. Um, yeah, I, I will start by saying that uh, you and I, I know you have all the information in front of you. I just want to make sure you understand how. The COLA that was presented by the personnel committee was derived, and that was by taking the two numbers. One of them was the consumer price index for the Northeast, which was five and a half percent, and the social security increase for this year, which was at 8.7 percent. You know, two of those numbers were averaged together to come up with a 7.1 percent. So it wasn't just the number picked out of the hat it was by averaging those two numbers. I just want to make sure that your community understands where that number came from. Mm -hmm. Other things I'd just like to point out, and some of these things are just my opinion on how I see things that happen within the town, and that is things like when a department prepares and presents their budget, with increases, and sometimes it's in materials, sometimes it's in utilities, and things like that. And it's stated that those increases are to present a level fund of services. I'm looking at this kind of increase is that we're asking that the employees are asking for to get a level of cost of, of living increase so that it's we're trying to keep our employees whole. By, by doing that. Um, other years, we've been looking at things where the, the social security increases were lower, much lower than they are right now. And when that happens, those kind of, those comments are made about the fact that social security is such a low number. And that sometimes has been factored into keeping the cost of living that the town presents down low. Well, in this case, 
now that it's up to 8.7 percent obviously that's a very high number no one wants to seem to look at that number um and then the last thing i have is that um other departments and we just heard one this evening that there are you know that they are presenting five to five and a half percent colas between steps and cost of livings and it doesn't seem like there's that much question asked about why or why why are they doing that why can't they hold their numbers down so um and so that when you look at that take the those departments that are doing that and you just take over the last two years that translates into an approximately a 10 percent increase in the last two years and last year the town of Whaley only voted to do a three percent raise and you take that 7.1 and it's there now that's basically coming out to the same number that other departments have received over the last two years that the town pays for it so those are just a few things that I wanted to point out. Um, I certainly um, can answer any questions. Does anybody else have any questions for me or as well? Does anyone have any questions regarding the um, decisions to this point that the Whitley Personnel Committee has brought forth? Um, Right now, they're recommending a 7%, 7 percent, 7.1, 7.1 cola, and the um, um, I think you're referring to the senior center, and the senior center was at 2.5 cola. Between the just talking cola, cola. And step. we need to talk apples and apples okay. and oranges and oranges. Well, so we're talking cola, and they were at 2.5. And the school cola is two, so that's that's where that is. I understand, and I think we all understand the need to keep good people, and I think we have good people. Um, it seems like we've done a lot of research. Uh, I would question why the information that Amy pulled out from surrounding towns. The coal is averaging between two and four percent. Were not used by the personnel committee. Rather, they used what the New England average was and a national num number. Um, that's just a question. You know, we can answer that downstream. Um, but with your research, how much do we pay out in salaries now? Town of Whitley. What's what's our salary ball? What's the ball of salaries that we pay? Between all the departments? All the everybody. Not school. Town. Okay. Well, I, I didn't know if you're referring. I don't have that number in front of me. Okay. Well, I um I got in touch with our town accountant. Now our town accountant name is <clears throat> I had that paper here just a short time ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Dara. Okay. So I asked Dara, I said, Dara, could you send me what the town of weight we paid in salaries and um, split it between town and school so that we don't get the two mixed up? And I said for 21 and 22, because obviously we don't have 23 yet. But in 21, we were 988,314. In 22, we were $1,016,026. Um, for 23, I said, well, you know, last year we did the 3%, and then we had obviously people who had to have adjustments in salary and whatnot. So I just extrapolated and I said, okay, let's do 4%. So this, this is simply an estimate for 23. In, and so that would be, um, that would be a million fifty six 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 seven in salaries for the town. If I took that number, then I took the 7% 
being asked by the personnel committee. That would bring us in 24 to $1,130,633 in salary. Now, from 21 to 24, our salary ball for the town has increased by $142,319. Not saying it's not worth it. Not saying that at all. I'm not saying it didn't go to good people who did good work over time. No question. But we have to look at the sustainability of that kind of an approach. And if you think about it, if you think about that 7% and, and you look at that over 10 years, you've added to the you've added to the cost of living in Waitley by a little more than $700,000 just with that increase. Because you got year after year after year, that increase stays there. It does not go away. So this is not a capital item. We have good people. This is a good place to work. People stay. Um, there's a lot to be said about um, feeling good about where you work. Obviously, you want to be compensated. But those factors are factors that the Finance Committee has to take into consideration when we hear 7%, when we hear 5%, when we hear 4 here regardless. So you got to know that there's more to the entire picture than the cost of New England being 5.5 and the national average being 8.3. And that's all well and good, but we, we have our own economy here. We live in a rural town in Western Massachusetts. Yes, it'd be great to compare ourselves to Boston and Weston and Newton and all of those places. We don't live there. We live here. And here, and here, here meaning Western Mass, We've got Conway at 2.5 to 3, Sunderland at 3, Hatfield at 2, 3, Ashfield, 2.5 plus 75, Shelburne at 4, West Hampton at 3, Coleraine at 4. This is where we live. We don't live out there. Um, granted, you know, we heard from Brian that we had an employee here who got a job out on the eastern part of the state and got, got bags of money thrown at it. Wonderful. Good for you. That's not where we live. We live here. So here is where we need to do our comparisons. So I'll leave it at that, but um, you know, we appreciate all of the work that a personnel committee does. And I don't know where this is going. I really don't. I don't know what the sustainability of this is. And what really scares me is the model that we use. We use a request model and we use it with the schools. The schools come in and they say, we need this. If we don't get this, oh my goodness gracious, we'll, we'll go to the tarmac. I think from my perspective, we need an allocation model. And what I mean by allocation model is simply this, that at the beginning of every year, the finance committee gets together with select board and whatnot. And we say, what can we afford? We can afford this amount of money. And we take that amount of money, whatever that percentage is, and we give it to the departments. We give it to the select board. That's what you have to use with the people who serve this town because you're the ones who oversee them. You're the ones who are the, they're, the, they're your direct reports. They're the ones who you understand what they do on a daily basis. We do not. So from my eyes, the ideal model would be an allocation model. And that would also mean that it doesn't get, or it could, it could get split up. Everybody get the same percentage right across the board or the, uh, the department heads or the select board could indicate which roles are most important to the town and direct money towards those roles. That's up to them, but that's, that shouldn't really be up to the finance committee. The finance committee should say what this town can afford 
And how long do we think it can afford it? And right now, that's, you know, this isn't written in stone. This isn't a decision. This is simply, this is simply me talking off the top of my head after listening and reading. And it's it's getting to a point where, especially with the schools too, the schools are asking for more and more. And, more. and um, I don't know how that, how we can sustain that over time. I mean, I just listened to, uh, I didn't listen to, but I was, uh, it was directed towards a conversation that towns had just west of us um, concerning their ability, and they, were, they, they, they had this discussion with their own uh, schools, that the, the, the demands of the school were getting to the point where it was going to erode what the town could afford for their own employees and offer services to offer their own residents. That's that's what was that's what's happening in some towns west west of here. So all of that is on the table, and we appreciate everything you've done. And does anyone have any questions? I have a comment. Go ahead. Uh, it is a question of sustainability, but I look at it from sustainability of the families of our employees. If we're giving them a 4% COLA in a year where their costs are going up six, seven, eight percent how sustainable is that for those families over five years, over 10 years? It is a question for the town, but it's also a question for all the families of the, of the employees of the town that we want to keep happy and we want to uh, stay in our employ. And I think just looking at it from the, you know, their costs are going up every day, every year at the rate of the cost of living. And that we say, well, we don't want to be able to afford that. So we're not going to give you as much as it's costing you. Well, they're not going to be able to buy as much food or gasoline or vacations or whatever, because we're not giving, we're not letting them keep up with the cost of living. And the other point I want to make is on um, you know, you talk about comparing apples to apples with colas and steps. Well, our employees do not have step increases. And I think you have to look at the total increase in compensation for an employee that a 4% COLA may be only 4% because that municipality knows that their people are also getting a 3% step. And that you can't just say, oh no, we can only compare COLA to COLA. You have to compare the, the compensation package. Good and, good and, and, and well, Amy, did a, I agree. a good job of getting the numbers from other towns. The COLA numbers in a vacuum don't tell the whole story. Our employees don't get step raises. No, they get salary adjustments. Sometimes. Uh, it's, there's it's a sheet every, 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 every year. Every year. Every year. Every right. single year. And it's, it's almost the, always the same people. It's just worded differently. That's yep. They, they get it. Mm -hmm. so they don't. If you they want to take it. out adjustments, you want to eliminate adjustments, that's then we'll go with the 7% COLA. Um, or I'll back a 7% COLA. That's I'm not, not going to back a salary adjustment of two or $3,000 and then a 7% on top of that. I, in good conscience, I can't do that. Okay, but I still, we, we still have, I still say we have to look at the financial needs of our employees as much as we look at, and we obviously have to look at the financial condition of the town, yep. but we can't just throw up our hands and say, where would we be in 10 years if we keep paying this? Well, I asked well, the question, where, where are they going to be in 10 years if we don't pay? What's going to happen? Just going to increase taxes. Yeah. And, well, it's, but it's I, a, and I'm saying, what happens to, it's to, a to the employees? It's a wrong robber. You, you've got to stop chasing the cat's tail. But our our, ta but our tax revenues are going up and housing prices increase. Our tax base goes up also. So we, we are, it's not that we're only, it's only on the outgo side. 
property values with last year, they went way, they went up 12%. So we're getting more tax revenue to cover those increased costs over time. So we're getting it on the income side too. It's not just a money going out, going out, going out. It's inflation. A dollar is not worth it, what a dollar was worth in 1940 or 1970 or 2000. The dollar that we get in now is worth, you know, we're getting more dollars in because each dollar is worth less. So I, I, well, you, I just say you can't just look at where we're going to be in 10 years if we keep spending this money, we're going to be in a position, at least to some extent, where the property base value of the property is up proportionate to what we're... That's a guess. That's, that's, it, the, no, it's a guess. Yeah. Right. Un, well, un, unless you have a crystal ball, what I can't tell you... I, is I know, I know that pro property does. values will go up with inflation in the same way as other costs yeah. will go up with inflation. Yeah. Well, okay. Good. And on, on those lines, Fred, my thinking is that you know property values are yeah. going up. So let's just keep raising the tax rate. And you know, we're wet, well below yeah. our levy limit. Let's start heading up toward our levy limit. Well, next thing you know, people are gonna say, you know, you guys are paying twenty dollars a thousand instead of fifteen. And you know now everybody in town's got all kinds making all kinds of money. Everybody that works here, well, people can't afford to pay the taxes. So then your property values go back down. But we're still committed to all the salary that we're carrying. Well, that as Paul just said about speculating, you're speculating. I'm speculating too. But you know, <laughs> you're going to speculate. Both ways. Go all the way. I don't um, know. All, all I'm saying is you can't just look at the. Expense I, side is saying know. over 10 years, where are we going to be? Well, in, 10, in, 10 year, no in, in 10 years, we will, our revenue base will be higher than it is now. That is, and it the, may be. When was the last may time be. property values went down over a 10 year period huh? since the depression? <laughs> well, I can, I can your, tell, your I can, tell I, can, I, I can guarantee you one thing, Fred. You go out to this little island out here we have off uh, the coast called Cape Cod, and you go back two years and you look at what homes were selling two years ago, and then shoot down there now see and, and see what they're going for now and see what the properties are being listed at now. And let me tell you, it's night and day. We have, it, it's a boom bust. And that's and that's and sure you, I, I, can, you, can, you can take a ride up to West Whitley and look at it, look at all the houses on Hanum's Hill, and everyone says, "Oh, everything's hunky dory," and and we're making all kinds of all kinds of cash in that town. Well, that's going to come to a head. That's that's yeah, that's going to end. Um, and when it does, well, it does. But I can tell you one thing: whatever you put in that budget for salary stays there. It does. Yeah. It's not a capital item. It stays there. Yeah. Question, Amy. Yes. Hi, Amy Schrader. Um, so <laughs> I completely understand the argument that you two are the conversation. Conversation. Right. So, and looking at it from a different perspective, after working in the town for a while, and I mean, instead of focusing on what, well, what I, my opinion is, where salaries are going to be in ten years, and where is our tax rate going to be. <laughs> I honestly think as a town, we should be focusing on where new growth can be. So as in like, you know, we're worried that, you know, we're going to be paying more in taxes. Well, if we, you know, start putting our energy and focus on, well, maybe we can grow exit 35. Maybe we can grow, you know, five and 10. Maybe we can do another Masterson Road or a Pine Plain Estates. That's all going to generate revenue and it's all going to generate tax dollars. And it's all going to keep our tax dollars low, which would possibly bring our salaries higher. And, I'm, and, and I would hate, like, you know, personally speaking, I just got a letter in the mail from my preschool. They're going up $3 a day. I have two kids in preschool. $3 a day is $6 times five days a week is 30. If I get a 5% polar, I'm going to get $88 a week additional. Take away the 30 bucks that now have to go to daycare, I'm down to 50. Like, it's, that's just one of many increases in my cost of living that that I see on a daily basis like and if I I thoroughly enjoy working for the town and maybe it's something we should look into as a step system for us and I I completely respect that some people might have hit their cap but, <laughs> yeah. but I, 
I, you know, maybe there are different options that we could look at to, to make this work for everybody and not feel like we're, you know, I have a hard time comparing Waitley to West Hampton. I don't think we're anything like West Hampton. We are in the middle of, we're right by Amherst, right by Greenfield, right North, Northampton. Like, we're in the middle of it, and we deal with big, big town, big city problems, situations that come up in this town. So I just feel like there's a, the bigger picture of it, and I just want you to think about that too. That you know, hopefully right. someday we can right. bring the new growth in to kind of level everything out again. There's no question a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture out there. Yeah, there is. There is. Um, there are many opportunities that this town has um, to grow. I guess, as you said, um, that's 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 really on the backs of the select board, mm -hmm. and is yeah, you know, hopefully that's something in their crosshairs. Um, right, we've got a grant right now. We've got a there you study go. for economic development. There you go. So and we're already moving. And it's so we're already moving towards that. What we right. have is here and now. We have 2024 to be decided on in 2023. Don't have five years ago. The remark I made in terms of those monies being in the budget is real. I mean, yeah, Fred could be, could be right. In 10 years, all of that could be offset by taxation. But Fred could be dead, dead wrong. And we're paying, like Tommy said, we're paying when the income is not there, but we're still paying. So what we do know is that those monies will be there in 10 years and they will be, they will be additional. They will add up over time. So it, 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 it's, just, it's just a factor. That's all we're, we're doing. We understand that it's, <clears throat> when you look at the cost of living, that it's, um, you know, the markers of what it costs to live in New England, what it costs and what the federal government is saying things cost um, are important factors. But when you look at this, I'd like to know what, I'd really like to know what, um, what Sunderland used. Did Sunderland use what it costs to live in New England and what it costs on a national basis for uh, what, what the cost of live, living is? I, I, I don't know. Um, to me, looking at this, um, they have a different view of how to, um, how to look at um, coal, coal is and raises. And I'm not saying that's all, but that is the world that we live in. So um, we're not gonna make a yes, Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Um, I think one of the challenges we all have is that we're in an economic environment that is unusually volatile. Right? It's absolutely true that Social Security gave an 8.7 percent increase for January. They've already started to preview the fact that, based on the way the data is going now, there may be no Social Security increase for next year. But who knows, because the data every month is going up and down. And it's, I, I mean, I don't have a solution to this. I just no. am acknowledging that this particular two, three month period is going to be really challenging because, you know, the personnel committee's data analysis, it is based on data. And I appreciated all the backup stuff, which is yeah. interesting. But, you know, four weeks later, the numbers are changing a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to have a hard time. And, and should we um the other thing is we're just we just make a rec we don't this isn't our decision no. we're it's, just it's a recommendation to to right. the, the town and it is um i mean obviously we we have a couple of individuals here who are passionate about the town we're passionate about um people that work here in the town um if this were on town floor and we put this on town floor and we gave the voting public the choice of two, four, six, or eight, you choose which percentage you want to 
choose for pers pers personnel wages, it'd be interesting to see what that would be like. It'd be interesting to see what this dynamic, what this discussion would be like. Um, but we don't do that because we have a finance committee, we have a select board, we have individuals who are cast to make some kind of an intelligent decision as to how best to appease both all parties. And that's what we're going to try to do. Now, if we're, we're going to, last year, the request was six, five. I mean, we came in at three. Um, I think the request was five and a half last year. Could, could be five and a half this year at seven. Does it make more sense? Should the personnel committee go back and say, look, we, sh we should make a request for three years. This is the three year. This is what we, we split whatever request and it would be so much over three years. That way, the finance committee, that way, the administration, we can all plan for what it's gonna be like next year and the year after that um, versus going through this every single year. Uh, but, so I, I, since I, that falls down in a year like last year where you had an eight to 9% in inflation rate, mm -hmm. which you could not foresee in the previous years where the inflation rate was to zero, zero or two or one. Yeah. Um, when you, uh, look, that, that I don't the employees have easy, would get there's no easy answer. answer. There's, there's, no, no, easy answer. there's no easy answer. And at the end of the day, we're going to have a number. We're going to recommend the number to the town. And everything you've done on the personnel commi committee is very important and will be a big part of that discussion. I can assure you that. Paul, I just want to say, do you mind? Go ahead. Let's go on. I just want to say that I agree with your suggestion that we have some meeting that this committee earlier, perhaps next year. Um, and I've certainly worked for many years in an environment where, as you've suggested, uh, a decision is made about the funds that are available for compensation increase and both across the board increases and market adjustments have to come out of that pool instead of somehow pretending that they're different things because it's the same money. <laughs> you know? yeah, so I, right. that's not for mm -hmm. today or this year. No, it's yeah. not, but, yeah. but it, it is certainly something that has to be kept in the back of our minds. And one of the things, when we started this whole thing, we started to talk about salaries, and I remember Brian talking about uh, the need to uh, compensate those individuals in town, those positions in town that are key. And one of, and that was due pretty much to having lost an employee to the eastern part of the state, uh, where they got thrown a couple of bags of money. And 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 you know when those things happen. It creates a lot of emotion. It creates a lot of thinking about. We don't want. We don't want this to happen again. We don't want to lose more people. So it comes down to compensating people, who and compensating positions, who, the town feels are most important. That's why, in many cases, as Don, Donna alluded to, the allocation model is really what may fit best all the way around because it allows for planning and it also allows for compensation based on need. So I don't have anything else to add, Amy. I just wanted to make a clarification. Could I see the chart for a moment, please? Thank you. So these numbers that were given to me, unless it says in parentheses that it was approved, these are numbers that they're just throwing around. Right. They're not set in stone. They're not approved. I don't um, know if you recall, but last year I made all of those phone calls and I spoke to most of those people and most of those numbers were the same. And most of those um, theoretical numbers ended up getting going on town floor and going through. Okay. And I just wanted to clarify that uh, I believe it was Conway has a step program, so that's why they were looking at 2.5 percent. And I want to say Pelham does too, but I don't recall. 
correct like and i don't want to talk out of turn um also, we can we can go through them again and you can I just fine want to make sure them. that you guys okay. don't think that these are that. like set in stone numbers and like that don't take that, that at this point okay no, okay thank you too early in the budget too process. early in the process right but it is a big part of the process okay we spent a lot of time on this Place to and we need we need to spend more time on it and um i Kate, I see Joyce has her hand. Yeah, Joyce has her hand. Oh, Joyce, go ahead. Hi, thanks. Hi. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about one thing I heard. I think I heard Paul say it twice that somehow we have to decide which employers are doing you know work that's really necessary and and important and which ones are not. And I would argue we do not have any employees who are doing something that we don't absolutely need done. There isn't a bunch of people sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting for some paper to come to their desk. Um, we Every single person is doing a job that we think is important and that's why we hired them to do that job. And I just don't, I just want that on the record. That's how I see things. If other people see things differently that someone who sits at a desk and that, that because they're sitting, they're not doing anything. I, I think that's completely boneheaded. But we don't have, I can't think of a single person who works for the town who isn't somebody we need to do the work that we have asked them to do to provide the services that our, our citizens want. And if, if, if I can add, the Joyce just said what I was going to say before. I, sure. I don't want to tell any of our employees that they are less important than any other employee. I agree. I agree with that. And I never ever meant for any statement that I said to be interpreted that way. If you did interpret it that way, I apologize for having um, possibly run down that road. But I also have a feeling that you may have interpreted incorrectly. Uh, my point was that in any organization, I don't care what, or I don't care if you go to the Boy Scouts. I don't care if you go to uh, the Texaco station down the road. I don't care if you go to Cooley Dickinson Hospital and look at the physician list in there. There will be some physicians who are more critical to the outcome in that hospital than other physicians. Plain and simple. That's how it is. You want to call it Pareto's law? Call it whatever you want. But it's the 80-20 rule. And it exists everywhere. And my point was that at the beginning of this year, there was a lot of hy hysteria here because we lost, we lost an employee to another town for more money. And there was, there, there was a great deal of uneasiness within this building around that and not wanting that to happen again. And I agree. You're never going to pay everybody a 20% increase. That's never never going to happen. Should somebody get a 20% increase? Absolutely. And I told that to the schools last week. I said, you got 80, 20 going on here in, the, in, in this school. You got 10% at the top that need more, and you got 10% at the bottom that should either go or, or be cut. That's That's just the reality of it. And... If it's not seen, it's because it's not being watched. It's not being managed. Do I think that we have employees in this town that should not be compensated? Not at all. Everybody should be compensated. And they should all be compensated greater than what they are. Can we afford to do that? That's the job of the finance committee. And that's the job of this type of a conversation. And that's what we're having. So I apologize if people misconstrued what I may have said regarding the importance of individuals in this town. Everybody's important. And we run a lean ship here. And there are people falling over and three guys holding up a shovel in the middle of the road, spreading tar. That doesn't happen. Um, but we have 
a decision to, to make. So thank you, Joyce, for that comment. I appreciate that. Any other comments? We have one public comment. Sure. From Grant. Uh, he says, the problem is our residents really want to pay more, but they really want to give up any phone services. The town needs to be focusing on what services it is committed to delivering them, make sure. Oh, I can't see, but there's a little thing in there. Then make sure to get good people and pay to retain. Don't commit to services and then try to squeeze the people to put their hearts into delivering those services to the residents. Mm -hmm. And I have a quick comment. Did somebody in the room? No. Um, that I wanted to uh, relabel, <laughs> if possible, the hysteria around losing uh, employee. We were. I, I would say we were concerned, and part of that was based on the fact that that specific employee was very adept at bringing in money. Sure. <laughs> she was very adept yeah, at bringing was, yeah. grant money for the town. Yeah, so losing no her was losing some income, and mm -hmm. that's where we were. Mm -hmm. That's where we got a little nervous. Yeah. Her. Can we get somebody else who can do that kind of job yeah. for us? Because she was very good at and it. And rightly so. Yeah. Um, but there were many conversations that I was either part of or heard or overheard where the, 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 the demand is we have to recognize that what kind of a marketplace we are in and we have to make sure that there are <laughs> that there are certain people we don't lose. And that may be everybody. I, I don't know. You know. I'm assuming that at some point there are balances. There are yeah. balances of a good salary, a good working environment, living in a wonderful rural community. Where no well, we can't pay when the no eastern part of the state yeah. pays, yeah. but we can offer a lot mm -hmm. in this area that yeah. you know will make it um, very and that, appealing. And, and I will say it, to this point that should not be the job. It should not be the job of the finance committee for me to look at Amy and know. What kind of percentage she's going to get? And now she's got two kids in daycare. That's not that's not my job. That's not our job. You know whose job that that is? That's your job. We <laughs> we elect you and we pay you to make those decisions. Boy, like that's why money too, right? Oh yeah. I don't care if it's ten cents. I don't care if it's ten cents. You knew what it was before running for the job. You get the job. You get to pay. You do the job. And your job should be to take care of the employees. Our job is to give is to tell the town how much money we should give you to take care of those employees. That's what we should do. We I'm not we, arguing with you about jobs. I okay. was just clarifying yeah. right. that he lost an employee who was good and great. All right, yeah. Onwards. All right, I'm not gonna kill this anymore. I'm tired of hearing my my son comment. One comment from just one quick comment from the police chief Savine. One quick comment. Sure. Just looking at your numbers that you, you came up with. That you got from Derek to look at those numbers. You have to also consider that you've added positions and hours for town employees as well. So that's not just cost of living increases for the employees. That's adding positions and adding hours to positions. Sure. So that's that's going to raise it as well. So you can't just look at that and say it raised up because of the cost of living that we've given our town employees. So I just want that on my the only point. Good point. You're just looking at bottom line numbers. Yeah, but that's that's all I could look. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. When I get in touch with her and ask her for, for yep. what whatever, I can't expect her to spend a day oh, doing yeah. my questions. Yes. And she's probably so have one question. Right. Yeah. So I got one question. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. We will um, close out, and we will move forward. Did he? Did he leave? Did Chris leave? Chris. Chris. Um, ah, oh, thank God you didn't leave. Come on in. Here. Okay. Uh, all right. Hold on. I gotta find where. Where is this? To. What are we looking for? Rec. Rec commission. CRS two. Where are we under what? Two, two, yeah. Here we go. Okay. Okay, Chris. Um, I want to throw you um, a job well done. 
Okay. And the reason I'm doing that is this. Um, I'm, I'm very close to the whole um, rec basketball environment. Okay. And that is a very important environment because those kids that are in that rec are also in school. And I get to hear it both ways. And for the first time, um, our rec commissioner actually went. The biggest problem with rec is this: you get um, you get a few goodwill, good natured, good meaning fathers who come in, volunteer to coach, and then stack their, their teams because their son or their daughter is a pretty good athlete and he's got their friends and next thing you know you got four good kids on the team and the other team in town has got kids that aren't quite as skilled that's called stacking a team and for years Waitley and the rec department and the director of the rec department allowed stacking to occur this gentleman came in and redid the team makeups. He made them all come back, and he 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 looked at the skill levels and then divided them up on each team. And that's what a rec director, in my eyes, should should do. So, job well done. Thank you. Okay. So, with that, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely say mission success. First thing first. Uh, Got to be the first time in history. Waitley three four and Waitley five six both won the Summerlin tournament. Both were undefeated, yeah. um, so that was pretty awesome. And then second three four team, they actually lost on a buzzer beater, um, so that was kind of tough. But they would have been right there in the running too. So that that was exciting to have our teams kind of playing at an elite level. But I saw that buzzer beater, and it should have been called back. That shouldn't have been allowed to score. <laughs> we had a couple of kids out there who were. Who, who were repping and swallowed the whistle halfway through the game. Yeah. And it, well, okay. Well, yeah, no, I was, I was talking with the, the Sunderland. He's like, it's Sunderland baseball run the basketball tournament. <laughs> yeah. Sunderland, they're separate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I was talking to the guy, his kid plays for me. Yeah. He was like running me through everything, promised the kids made, made a good call and all that. Oh, like, oh my God. Oh, it was something. One of those kids, though, that rep, he actually plays at Davidson. I know he does. Like, he's pretty good. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I got to give him that. But I yeah, got to give him the whistle. Except he didn't turn. blow the whistle. Yeah. Yeah. You can't guard him outside the yard. You can't let him shoot outside the yard. Oh, right. Right. Good on. But um, okay. yeah, as far as um, equipment goes, um, we've been doing great with that. Our budget's, our budget's been great with that. Um, able to keep our guys up with the, you know, our uh, boys and girls up with the most, um, you know, elite stuff, making sure we have quantity, which um, I think is critical. Like every player is a soccer ball, every player is a basketball. We got a million baseballs um, to just make it easier for coaches too. Um, you know, good collaboration with coaches this year um, on all levels, all the way from pre-K up to grade six. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, when you look at our budget, um, no, you know, no real changes were going up significantly. Um, just kind of making slight adjustments based on um, prices. Um, the one new thing. Um, was my position direct director. Um, so we budgeted $5,608.20 for that, um, just based on the five hours per week. Um, and really, when you're looking at this, that is um, the only change. Um, sports equipment replacement going up 500 bucks. Just again, the prices, um, you know, a dozen baseballs this year, it's unbelievable. $92 really? um, for a dozen game balls, which is <laughs> unbelievable. The good thing about us is that early heat, we don't lose baseballs. So that's like the beauty of it. Like at yeah. Frontier, I literally, yeah. me and my guys, we spend 92 bucks every game because the balls go off sure. into foul territory. Yeah. And he's in a lawsuit with the school, so we can't even go get them anymore. Wow. So do they come back and sell them to you after they call the court? I money wish they would. If they give them to us for 50% off, I'd pay for it. It'd be a deal. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, so that um, so going up 500 for equipment, um, you know, that was that would be yeah. our adjustments. Um with Hurley Heat Park, 
Um, going up five hundred dollars there as well was our, our recommendation. Um, we have some some new stuff coming to Hurley Heat. Um, our scoreboard is going to be going up. Um, so Wayne, who's now the head of our rec commission, um, he's talking about some like extra electric outlet that'll do the scoreboard and and hopefully help out if we um, we're able to get batting cages at some point. Um, and then what was the other thing I heard of you? Maybe we'll come back today. But um, yeah, so oh, recycling bins and trash bins. Um, we ended up like doubling up on those. And um, we actually have them set up right around with all the fields. We have a couple more in the bank that we're going to put out as well once it gets nice out. Um, so our uh, bill from BKM Solutions, they do our trash. So that's going up due to um, due to the number of trash and recycling bins that we now have. Um, but trash is no longer an issue, which is great. That's good. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, as far as our budget goes, those are the adjustments. Um, just some numbers um, as far as registrations go. Um, you know, last year we made eight thousand six hundred and forty dollars in program registrations. This year, um, prices did not go up. And it was nine thousand seven hundred five dollars. So we went over a thousand dollars in increase, and that is exclusively just registration numbers. Again, price did not go up. So what what's your revolving fund now? Um, our revolving fund is just over ten thousand dollars right now. Okay. And um, kind of the the coolest thing about you know when you look at the registrations thing. It's like you, I have the payments here in front of me, cap, zero dollars, check, zero dollars. It is all going on a credit card that they are able to use based on our rec software. Um, and with that, I think our registration numbers, I mean, we're doing a good job recruiting. We have great yeah. coaches and all that. But this software has been absolutely critical for, for getting these people signed up. You don't have to, it's not like the old days where you meet at the town hall on Tuesday at seven o'clock, and if you miss it, you're toast, you're right? Lot, yeah. um, so we're, so I think that's huge with helping. Like I was talking to the Sunderland guy, they have four kids signed up for grade one and two baseball because he can't, he can't get them. It's with the low income housing in Sunderland, it's tough to get these people to come back to the school, check their emails, all that different kind of stuff. So he struggled with that. That was something I shared with him about our success with it. Um, but yeah, that that rec desk software has been monumental in um, in getting our registration numbers where we want them. We'll have um, maybe two rookie teams. We'll have a minor team full of kids. T ball. We have seven team registration, which is awesome. Um, you know, basketball, huge numbers. We have two teams of three, four, and one, two. Um, and then our four basketball guys just had to deal with like like 23 little preschoolers through kindergartners running around, but they made it happen, like you were talking about super dads and super moms getting in there helping out. Um, but yeah, so we're we're really we're really excited about, about where we're at. And okay. do we have any questions? Thank you. Oh, by the way, report. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And apologize for my entire company bracket. It's okay. We'll let it go this time. All right. That's the deal. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Thanks, All Chris. Right. Thank right. you, everybody. Appreciate it. Have yeah. a good night as well. Amy? That's it. Really? Well, I guess it's the uh, recommendations from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. I would assume that's by. Chief is here. Seth, I'm Chief Oh, he's still. See ya. He's out the hall. Does he really want to do this? Uh, do you guys want to do this? Um, I think maybe. Um, so he's supposed to be here to talk about the police budget on April 4th. Why don't we leave it there? Okay. Let, so, let me go get him. So can... uh -oh. Who's it? Police Chief. He sees it was supposed to be reviewing that budget on April 4th, yeah. but he's here now. But I think Amy's going to tell him that we're going to go to April 4th. So we can, he's yeah. around. It's not like he's got to travel in from, you know, Lighton. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. any, yes, Georgia. 
We would like the what commissioners would like to uh, ask the uh, selectmen um, for some like sixty thousand dollars for a generator for uh, um, the pump and station. And I know what you're going to say um, it's not for the whole town, but you got to consider a couple other things. The school is an emergency uh, facility. Um, also, it supports all the fire uh, area in town with its water. So I think you ought to kind of consider that um, it's not just serving the people that are supporting the water system. We are actually supporting the whole town. Without that, if we had to shut down, you could not no longer use that pool as an emergency facility. Is that a capital thing, Dan, or this? No, that's a request for PLFRF money. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's something we take up in a joint meeting, or should no? That 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 that's a select board only. Select board only, and. To put that yeah. request in, she's got to get that. You got to get that in black and white, right? Yeah, um, yeah, right. And, and it's also it's not yeah, it's not posted on an, the, any agenda. So we probably shouldn't deliberate on that. It's I mean, it kind of comes up as a public comment, um, which is fine. But if we were to actually deliberate and make a decision, we have to post an agenda saying right. what we're going to be deciding on. So we uh, can't take this up right now. Exactly. Um, and uh, and it would really be helpful to have more information, um, you know, costs and and estimates and uh, all kinds of other whatever other justifications can be put in black and white and get them to Brian. Um, and it does actually sound like a capital item, but you know, yeah. Is this, you know, not to muddy the waters here, but is this separate from the generator for the? Uh, crossover pumping yeah, station. Would be a domain pump. Okay. All right. Even we, theirs would be obsolete without this. Yeah. We have nothing down there now. Okay. No. no. Whatever water we have in the tank when the power that's goes it. off, that's what yeah. we got. So, are you set with how to go about this? Yes. Yeah. Black and white, Brian, to select board, get on their agenda, bring it up okay. again, and we'll you, they'll deal with it on that side. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank Thank you. you. Um, anything else for tonight? Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Okay, do I have a uh, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.